Hi guys, welcome to another session of RBI 24/7. My name is Mansi Anand and I extend a warm welcome to all of you. So guys, I hope आप लोग सब बहुत अच्छा कर रहे होंगे and आपकी तैयारी जोरों जोरों से चल रही होगी. So let's not waste any time and move straight away to the session. But before doing that, guys, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel. अब तक तो आप लोगों को काफी आदत हो गई होगी वैसे. And you can always press this bell icon. If you are watching our video for the first time, then do connect to us because it can help you to get access to a lot of good content. You can also join our Telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so here is your first question for today, which says Mukesh is working in Jamtara, Jharkhand. He has been employed by Bank of Baroda. to provide banking services in the area because it is not feasible for the bank to establish brick and mortar branches he tries to organize lending procedures there by providing easy availability of credit to jamtara people what is mukesh working as i think it's a very simple question this term is very popular in newspapers or if you are studying about banking structure in india moving ahead to correct option for this question and the correct option for this question is option d option d means banking correspondent see the na the name in itself tells you banking correspondent someone who helps to carry out the processes of the bank is known as banking correspondent but in spe certain specific areas like remote areas So, अगर हम किसी दूर दराज के गांव में देखें या फिर किसी ऐसी जगह पे देखें जहां पे टेक्नोलॉजी का बहुत ज्यादा अपग्रेडेशन नहीं है और इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर दी बैंक टू ओपन ब्रांचेस बिकॉज इट माइट बी रियली एक्सपेंसिव टू गो देयर और टू ओपन अ ब्रांच देयर बिकॉज सी इफ अ ब्रांच इफ अ बैंक हैज टू एस्टेब्लिश अ ब्रांच इट मीन्स इट विल हैव टू इट विल हैव टू गेट फर्नीचर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी कनेक्शन एंड बेसिकली एवरीथिंग दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर carrying out its normal operations but whether people are going to use that branch make um, uh, make visits to the branch and use those banking facilities or not so basically uh, it is very expensive now what to do how to include such people who are living in these remote areas so in gaon ke logo ko ya fir bahut remote areas ke logo ko apne sath jodne ke liye they use the agents called banking correspondents so banking correspondents can be entities or individuals and these are usually those individuals or those entities who are familiar with the culture of that particular place so agar ye jharkhand mein kaam kar rahe hain to they will try to take a person who is really familiar with the culture see because guys in india especially in the remote areas the uh, people work on or work by building relationships right so this is termed as relationship banking because people might not trust big establishments or big banks but if there is a certain person who belongs to their own community or who is from their own village then it might be easy to trust that person with uh, technology or with credit facilities right so if you select a person from uh, from amongst themselves then it is obviously easy for those people to trust that particular person right so that is why it works the system works by building relationship see you can see a contrast here to the urban areas if you remember in a session we learned about digital lending right so digital lending mein humne kya dekha tha ki machines ke through कैसे आपको बैंकिंग सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड की जा रही हैं या लेंडिंग सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड की जा रही सॉरी लेंडिंग सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड की जा रही हैं एंड व्हेन यू आर वर्किंग इन अ डिजिटल लेंडिंग सेटअप बेसिकली देर इज मिनिमम ह्यूमन कांटेक्ट राइट यू आर नॉट टॉकिंग टू समवन यू आर जस्ट गोइंग ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर एप एंड फिलिंग योर डिटेल्स एंड यू आर गेटिंग अ लोन सो देर इज मिनिमम ह्यूमन कॉन्टैक्ट सो अर्बन एरियाज मूविंग टू digital procedures because they might not work efficiently with this relationship culture but rural areas there they need to build relationship in order to uh, in order to collect these people or in order to align uh, people from uh, backward areas people from underprivileged areas to the mainstream banking services right 
so do you i hope you can uh, you can understand this contrast in both the areas urban areas and remote areas urban areas people want minimum human contact with machines doing most of the job whereas in villages trust plays an important role right so banks corresponding sakhi yojana is another variant of a similar uh, scheme because in with the use of this sakhi yojana they are trying to integrate women into this process of financial inclusion right okay so here you can see some jobs which are performed by these banking correspondents identification of the borrower basically they uh, try to work by providing easy credit facilities to people in remote areas right so these are some jobs which come under this purview identifying who are the people who need loans collection and premium, preliminary processing of loan application see for someone belonging to a remote village it is very difficult to go to a bank and then fill out all the forms and carry on with all the formalities that is why if there is a person who they can trust see uh, for example let, let's take an example here let's see uh, let's say you want to buy a new phone right so you are confused that whether you should go for the new android phone or whether you should buy iphone now who are you more likely to trust a friend who you know very dearly or who is a very dear friend to you or some random person or let's say some only an acquaintance right on one hand there is one of your bestest best friends who you trust really blindly uh, who you trust trust blindly and on the other hand there is some person let's say only a colleague who you know from past 5 or 6 months or let's say one year but not on a very a personal or close level right so obviously you are going to trust more your best friend so that is the same procedure that goes on here that is why people try to people tend to trust uh, uh the people tend to trust those entities or those individuals who belong to their own communities right and that is why they are more and see there is less hesitation in seeking their help if they want to uh if they want to uh, know that how to fill a certain form or what are the formalities what are the documents that you have to provide then it is easier to talk to someone who is one of your own or who is who is from your own uh, village or your own community basically comes from a similar cultural background that is why this is one uh, one aspect which has to taken in con which has to be taken in consideration in order to integrate remote areas into the process of financial inclusion i think rest of them you can just read on your own there's nothing uh, really complex here creating awareness about different products processing and submission of applications nurturing monitoring of self help groups so i think self help groups is also one of the major players in the remote areas post sanction after uh, you give give the loan and then you want to monitor follow up for recovery right small value deposits sale of micro insurance so this is also an important point if you want to send different types of product which might be new to these people so micro insurance mutual fund products basically trying to cultivate some uh, some uh, saving habits or some investment habits so that the money which is saved by people in their homes that uh, that should lead them to earn a return rather than just lying idle at the homes pension products other third party products right okay so moving ahead to next question okay this is the second question for today which says with dash schemes investor give money to a portfolio manager and then when they want their money back they are paid out of incoming funds contributed by the later investors so this is particularly a structure correct option for this question is option e that is ponzi scheme So, guys, if you remember, in one of our previous session, we discussed about chit fund, and there was one comment asking the difference between a Ponzi scheme and a chit fund. So, first thing that I would like to tell you is, chit fund are way are valid investment vehicles, whereas a Ponzi scheme is started with a started with some fraudulent. intentions right chit fund investors they are valid investors 
whereas ponzi schemes the basic intention is to deceive the investors see it is a scheme which is built up by acquiring more and more investors you are just telling your investors that you are going to make so much of money and then you take money from new investors and then you pay the you pay the older investors by money that has been lent to you by the new investors i hope aap sunne hera feri to dekhi hi hongi so basically ye ek ka do karne wali jo schemes hoti hain unko aap ponzi schemes ki category mein dal sakte ho to ye bahut jaldi investors ko lure karti hai with a very high rate of return ki bahut jaldi aapka paisa double ho jayega ya triple ho jayega ek mahine mein double ho jana right so is type ke jo schemes hain offers like these which which tell you that they are going to double your investment in a very short period of time they try to lure investors right and let's say in the first round they collect rupees 10 lakh they do nothing with it but when someone out of this 10 lakh let's say an investor wants 2 lakh back then they are going to find new investors take money from them and give this money back from the from the money that comes from the new investor right so that is see because this process has to end somewhere you are just building a house of cards because for these are different levels right this has to stop somewhere this is going to come to an end you cannot keep on finding new investors and just paying the older ones back right so this process whenever it ends whenever the, uh, there is transparency about this structure new investors are not found and the company the the investment fund is not able to pay the older investors back and that is when the scam takes place or that is when the fraud takes place right so that is a ponzi scheme it is like really different from chit fund because chit in chit fund people invest their money they get their money back on rotation basis turn by turn right i hope you remember the example that we discussed the question was based on a study right so that is chit fund and here is ponzi scheme just so see in chit fund they are using that money they are they are working like a cooperative they are collecting money and then they are trying to lend to people who need it urgently but in a ponzi scheme they are not using the money they are just trying to pay the older investors back by raising the by raising new money so that is the basic difference here you can see ponzi scheme you can have a glimpse in at this diagram right how they are trying to collect new investors type of fraud in which investors think return come from sales of products but they don't come from there there are no products investors are just be defrauded whole setup is a con right here you can see okay some more details about ponzi scheme fraudulent investing scam high rates of return with little risk to investors see where there is although a very high there is a little risk for the initial investors because then the scheme is going to find new investors and pay the older investors back तो अगर शुरू शुरू में इन्वेस्ट किया है तो हो सकता है आपको आपका पैसा वापस मिल जाए बट इफ यू आर वन ऑफ द इन्वेस्टर्स हु आर इन्वेस्टिंग इट एट इन्वेस्टिंग योर मनी एट लेटर स्टेजेस देन द रिस्क इंक्रीजेस बिकॉज देन इट इज गोइंग टू बी डिफिकल्ट टू फाइंड न्यू इन्वेस्टर्स एज लॉन्ग एज द स्कीम कैन फाइंड न्यू इन्वेस्टर्स दिस कैरीज ऑन बट वंस द न्यूज आउट इन दी ओपन और वंस दिस वेल इज लिफ्टेड दिस दिस ये जो ये ये जो झूठ वाली बात है ये जो झूठ का ये जो झूठ डिफ्रॉड वाली सच है वो सबके सामने आ जाता है उसके बाद नए इन्वेस्टर्स को ढूंढना काफी डिफिकल्ट हो जाता है विच जनरेट रिटर्न फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टर्स विद मनी टेकन फ्रॉम लेटर इन्वेस्टर्स एंगेज इन अंजी स्कीम फोकस ऑल ऑफ दियर एनर्जी इन टू अट्रैक्टिंग न्यू क्लाइंट टू मे इन्वेस्टमेंट सो this new income used to pay original investors their returns marked as a profit from a legitimate transaction so basically they are doing nothing they are just shifting the burden jisko hindi mein hum topiya ghumana bhi bolte hain iski topi uske sath ponzi schemes rely on a constant flow of new investments when this flow runs out it falls apart where does this name ponzi comes from a person who who became really popular by indulging into such a structure known as 
Charles Ponzi. But there are many other uh, many other scams which focus on the structure, who are built up on the structure, like the Madoff scam. Or there was a person called Sarah. How? Sarah How or the Madoff scam. So these were some of the these are some of the popular scams which were based on this Ponzi scheme, right? Okay, so moving ahead to the next question. So this is the third question. Gives you some statement about price discovery and you have to select the incorrect one. So guys, be careful. You have to select the ones which are incorrect, not the correct ones. Moving ahead to correct option and correct option for this question is option B. Option B means 2 and 3 are incorrect whereas 1 is correct. So uh, guys, this question also comes from your comments. So one of you asked me to talk about price discovery. See, price discovery is nothing but just a process which is followed to find out what is the correct price of a product in the market, right? So let me give you a very simple example. I think girls can easily relate to it. So agar, if you are familiar with Delhi Sarojini market, which is popular for its street market, right? So if you like a dress there, they are going to quote rupees thousand to you but that depends upon you how much you can bargain and how much you can negotiate with the seller to let's say get the dress at 600 right someone it might be possible someone who is better than you at negotiation might get this dress for rupees 400 right so basically it is priced this is simply a process of price discovery right Let's say this dress is very popular and you are willing to pay 600 for it but there are two other customers who are willing to buy this dress. So now the bargaining power is in the hands of seller and you are willing to buy, uh, pay 600. These customers, one might be willing to pay 650 and the other one she might be willing to pay 700. So do you see that we are analyzing here that what is the demand? If the demand is high then obviously the price tends to move upwards, right? But if uh, let's say the seller was not able to sell this dress and no one was buying it, the seller might have reduced the price. So just by analyzing the forces of demand and supply, you try to find a perfect price for a commodity, right? Here we are talking about a dress in Sarojini Agar. It might be, it, it can be applied to commodities or investments or any asset like real estate that you buy, right? So this is called as Price discovery. Price discovery is done by the market. By market, I mean forces of demand and supply. You three people want to buy this dress. This shows high demand. Seller is willing to sell. So demand is higher than uh, supply. That is why the price goes up. Right. So this is price discovery. Now contrasting it with the process called Valuation. Valuation means you try to determine the price of a product by using a model or by a statistical technique or by basically some theory that has been given by some financial expert. Right? So here you are trying to put a value to an asset. Right? Using different models. Whereas in case of price discovery, the focus is on market rather than the model, right? So that is why price discovery is a market oriented process, whereas valuation is model oriented. So uh, let's say for taking an example here, let's say you want to buy a second hand car and then you contact a company like Cars24, uh, you tell them that I want a car. Right, so uh, the seller shows you, let's say, an i20, which is 2016 model. Now, you will be trying to find a value to it that this is going to be the valuation for the car because this is this much old and it has depreciated so much in this years. 
and this is the condition of the car right so basically you are trying to find using it the using different models or different calculation procedures rather than going by the market right so in this way the seller tries to determine the price of the car right so that is that is why price discovery and valuation they are different in nature so moving uh, getting back to the statements first statement that says price discovery involves finding where demand and supply meet basically their intersection is the correct price that is why the statement is correct because you were willing to pay 600 for the dress and the seller was willing to sell you so this is the price where you agree because seller cannot sell you the dress below 500 and you cannot pay more than 600 right so that is why this is the price this is the equilibrium where you have agreed next statement which says where price discovery is model driven mechanism so this is not right it is driven by market and valuation is driven by model right the third statement says other name for price discovery of an asset is fair value the correct statement is other discovery for other name for valuation of an asset is fair value right because here you are trying to find out the value see for example, let's talk about Bitcoin. So I think I've talked about this in many sessions that how frenzy is going on and Bitcoin has crossed $35,000 in price, right? So some asset that has jumped from $20,000 to $35,000 suddenly, do you think its fundamentals have grown that much? Or in a short span of time, let's say in two months, if this is January start और इससे पहले का भी हम डिसेंबर मंथ भी ले लेते हैं तो क्या एक से दो महीने के अंदर बिटकॉइन के फंडामेंटल्स या उसकी यूटिलिटी इतनी ज्यादा बढ़ गई है तो ऐसा तो है नहीं बट दिस इज बीइंग लेड बाय मार्केट राइट बिकॉज़ देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ डिमांड इररिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ इट्स फंडामेंटल्स इररिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ इट्स यूटिलिटी टू द कस्टमर एवरीवन वांट्स इट दैट इज व्हाई द प्राइस इज हाई राइट सो that does not gives you a fair value right uh, that is why valuation gives you a reference of the fair value of an asset that this asset is worth this much because here in case of valuation you are using some model rather than price discovery which focuses on market based elements right so this is pro this is price discovery rather than valuation because that is taking place in the market that is being led by market forces of demand right okay here you can see i think we have discussed uh, in briefly uh, we have discussed in brief all these points price discovery overall process whether explicit or inferred setting a spot price or proper price of an asset so price discovery you try to find a price for an asset Security can be bonds or shares, commodity or currency. I hope you remember the negative oil prices that happened in 2020. Looks at a number of tangible and intangible factors, supply and demand being the major ones. After that risk, uh, whether investor is willing to take risk or not. In case of Bitcoin, the risk appetite of investors is truly high. That is why they are just they they are keep on they they are uh, adamant on buying a commodity and driving its price up overall economic and geopolitical environment right so this uh, you can un i think bitcoin example can be placed here also because uh, since the central bank has been a little lenient towards cryptocurrency in india also it has been catching it has been getting into the trend right so Environment is also very important, economic and geopolitical. Simply put, where a buyer agrees with a seller. Location. So location, storage, transaction costs, buyers and sellers, psychology, these things also play some role, right? No specific formula for price discovery because it is being determined by the market. Okay, fourth question. This question says, what does it refer to here? To 
two statements given to you you have to find out the meaning of it here right it talks about a particular clause that is present in contracts moving ahead to the state correct answer correct answer for this question is option c that is alienation clause guys it's a very simple clause right if you have taken a car if you have bought a car on emi right what is emi you have basically taken a loan and using that loan you have bought a particular car now you cannot sell that car unless and until you clear off all the dues that you uh, that the, that you are obliged to pay to the lender right so that is simply that this clause means allows the transfer or sale of a particular asset to be done once the main party fulfill its financial obligations otherwise it would have been so great take a car on a loan and then sell it off get the money and just run away with it but no this cannot happen because of this clause right you have to pay your dues first only then because see unless and until you pay all the dues to the lender if you have taken a loan car loan from let's say hdfc bank you are not a complete owner of the car because you have taken money on loan and if you do not pay they can take the car away from you so since you are not the owner how can you sell it in order to become the owner you will have to pay the lender completely also called due on sales clause that is the alienation clause okay <coughs> sorry refers to a provision commonly find a found in contracts especially in mortgage and property insurance contracts clause generally allows the transfer or sale of particular asset to be done once the main party fulfill its financial obligation right then if you fulfill it you are you can be you will be able to sell it so the lenders they structure contracts in such a way that they ensure to put such a clause because see here the lender is putting this clause in order to protect themselves right what is their incentive that what if you run away with the, that pro, uh, particular product or you sell it off and raise money rather than paying the lender so in order to protect themselves this is like a preventive measure right protects the lender also referred to as due on sales clause usually a standard especially in the mortgage industry so guys this is the last question for today this question says a company called x limited issued bonds worth 1 million simultaneously it invests an equivalent amount let's say this is 1 million dollars simultaneously invest an equivalent amount in treasury bonds which bond has the company issued right so issued a particular bonds but of the same, put an investment of similar amount into the treasury bonds what is the what are these bonds called these are called a defeased bonds right let's learn something about defeased bonds guys a similar concept has been discussed by me in a recent session i hope you will remember refunding and refunded bonds we are going to discuss it here also that same concept is going to be applied here also defeased securities debt secured by another asset or assets zeroing out its impact on issuer's balance sheet see basically in simple terms agar ek company hai aur wo bonds issue karti hai aur wo usi ke barabar value value ka money kisi aur investment mein dal deti hai jo ki bahut liquid hai matlab ya to uska cash ya to uske barabar ka cash equivalent rakhte hain then it is known as defeased bond basically they are trying to back the bonds with the help of these investments that they have made so they uh, they don't have to worry about redeeming the bonds or paying the bonds back because they know they have the investment they can sell them and raise the money and then pay the bond holders right so this is in simple terms defeased bonds guys if you remember refunded and refunding bonds refunded bonds all so works on a same concept but the only difference is that in case to pay off the refunded bonds refunding bonds are issued right so in order to pay one investment new investment or new security sorry in order to pay off one security another security is being issued here 
the company is keeping cash or cash equivalent in order to pay off the defeased bonds right that is why zeroing out its impact on the issuer's balance sheet because obviously if they have an equivalent investment then they do not have to worry about the pay its payment burden right that is why no impact on balance sheet because if they are increasing their liabilities they are also increasing their investment by a similar amount by sorry by an equivalent amount so these bonds obviously carry lower yields because they are much safer and investment has been put uh against it in order to pay them in the pay them back in the future right so basically deficits more it is basically a provision nothing but a provision in a contract that voids a bond or loan or balance sheet so this particularly works on a provision that is put in the contract of the bond that is known as deficits and according to this they have to keep an equivalent investment that voids a bond or loan on a balance sheet because a similar investment is there that is why the financial burden is cancelled right set aside cash or other low risk bond sufficient enough to service the debt best form is refunding bond issues right clause is a mortgage provision indicating that the borrower will be given the title to the property once all mortgage payments term are right so guys these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video if you did then do not forget to hit the like button because i'll be back in next session with some new information so till then you guys keep watching keep studying and thank you for being here